Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today, I want to tackle the question of when is a firearm loaded? And to answer that, we actually have to look at the opposite question. When is a firearm unloaded? The reason why is that several provisions in terms of storage, transport, and so forth require that the firearm be unloaded. And so that's actually the term that they define. They don't define loaded, they define unloaded. So we can understand a loaded firearm to be one that is simply not unloaded. It's not usually how people think of this sort of issue, but it's the way the law is written. So let's look at the definition of unloaded and see what that tells us. So unloaded in respect of a firearm means that any propellant, projectile, or cartridge that can be discharged from the firearm is not contained in the breech or firing chamber of the firearm, nor in the cartridge magazine attached to or inserted into the firearm. That's uh, an interesting definition. You might be saying here, wait a minute, why did they say pro propellant, projectile, or cartridge rather than just saying ammunition? Because ammunition is actually defined in the code. We can just go ahead and have a look at that here as well. So ammunition means a cartridge containing a projectile designed to be discharged from a firearm and without restricting the generality of the foregoing includes a caseless cartridge and a shot shell. So if you're wondering why they didn't just say ammunition, there's a couple of things that they were specifically trying to avoid. Uh, first of all, uh, this would cover black powder firearms because they don't take ammunition in the standard sense. They don't have a cartridge. But if it's got powder in it or if it's got a projectile in it, then that's enough. The other one, and I'll try to hold it up to the camera, although it's pretty, uh, it's going to be pretty fuzzy because this camera is on a fixed focus. I apologize, I've got another camera coming, but uh, what this is, is these are, and you're not going to be able to read that, these are uh, air gun pellets. Air gun pellets are not ammunition in the law because they are, they don't have a cartridge containing a projectile, they just are a projectile in and of themselves. So they're not legally speaking ammunition, but if you have an air gun and it's got a pellet ready to go in it, even if the air gun is gassed down, so there's no, you know, it's got a leak even, you know, so it can't actually fire, it can still be loaded if you've got that pellet inside. So that's something to be aware of. But people ask a number of questions with respect to this. And so one of the first ones that I get asked quite a bit is, what happens if I've got a shotgun and we can see unloaded here, uh, nothing going on, safe, uh, safe to hold up, but Let's say I've got a shotgun with a side saddle, and unfortunately I don't have a side saddle here to show you, but if you're aware of what a side saddle is, it's a, you know, usually fits at the buttstock, and you can put cartridges or shells, typically shotgun shells, but not necessarily, uh, and then carry them around and have them ready to go. That way if you're out and you can pull a, sh a shell off and throw it in there. And people say, well, is that loaded? Let's uh, let's consider that question because first thing is if you own, if all you have is projectiles or shot shells or whatever on the side saddle, then they're not in the breech or firing chamber, so that part of the test is not an issue. But what if what about the cartridge magazine part? Well, let's go back to our definitions and have a look at what a cartridge magazine is in the law because that's going to be an important aspect here. So cartridge magazine means a device or container from which ammunition may be fed into the firing chamber of a firearm. So what that typically means is something along the lines of this. You know, this is a handgun magazine. If placed in a handgun, when the action cycles, it will feed ammunition into the firing chamber of the handgun. We all understand this to be a magazine. But people say, well, couldn't a side saddle be a magazine because you have ammunition there and you could feed ammunition from that into the firing chamber of the shotgun by means of your hand. You just take your hand and you... So it's an interesting argument, but I don't think it's likely to succeed if it was argued by the Crown in court. And the reason why is because if we accept that definition, then things get really broad. What I mean by that is we've got a new prop here, a measuring cup. This came from my kitchen. And this is a box of shot shells. And we can just see through measuring cup, shot shells. 
Now we've got a measuring cup full of shot shells. And take another box, measuring cup again. Now, in theory, I can take a shell out of this and slot it into the firing chamber of the shotgun. I'm not going to do that because I'm in my house. That's not something I want to do in my house, but in theory I could. So does that make this measuring cup a cartridge magazine? Because if a side saddle is a cartridge magazine, then this measuring cup must also be a cartridge magazine because it works exactly the same way. I don't think you're going to find a judge saying that a measuring cup is a cartridge magazine. And especially, you know, if a measuring cup is a cartridge magazine, then so is your pockets, so is your mouth, so is all of, you know, pretty much any container. So I don't think we're going to be able to extend the definition of cartridge magazine that far. But the other one people ask is, what happens if I've got a shotgun like this one, which has a neat little compartment in it? You can see it's got an empty space. And if I take a couple of shells and drop them in the back there and close everything up here, have I just loaded this shotgun? And the answer to that really has to be no. And the reason why I say that is that when we start talking about We've already sort of covered the cartridge magazine aspect. This part isn't a cartridge magazine for the same reason that this isn't. But this also is not the breach or firing chamber. There is no path from here to bang. So we're not going to have to worry about that. There just isn't a way that those shells are going to go off in this scenario. So it's not the breech, not the firing chamber, and not a cartridge magazine that's attached to or inserted into the firearm. So not loaded. But people say, well, 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 made of... Wait a minute here. What if we're talking about like the AR-7? And if you're not familiar with firearms, the AR-7, you can see it in a James Bond movie. But it's a small fold-down uh, rifle. You, It's a little 22 rifle, and it folds down into its stock. Unfortunately, all the pictures of it are copyrighted and I don't have one here to show you, but there is a spot in the stock for a magazine. And so while it's all folded down and of course can't be fired in that fashion because the barrel is disassembled and inserted into the stock, all of the, you know, the key components are disassembled from each other. But the magazine goes into that stock, so it's into the firearm. Here we're getting into a little bit more of a legal, legally interesting question because what does it mean for something to be attached to or inserted into the firearm? Now, we can ask ourselves that question with the... Uh, so I've got here a, a SIG pistol and again, unloaded. So no concerns there, but here we've got a charged magazine. Now, if I were to insert the charged magazine, which again, I'm not going to do because in my house, into the handgun, then we're talking about a loaded handgun and that would be a bad thing, at least in this particular context, because I'm not going to fire the handgun in my house. That's not a good idea. I'm keeping this pointed up because that's probably the safest direction, but we're in a fairly safe spot here. But let's say I go and if we all remember the duct tape from a previous demonstration, let us say I engage in a little bit of arts and crafts here. And so I take my duct tape and my cartridge magazine. And I go and I am going to, with the help of a handy little knife here, because I don't really want to wrestle too much with the duct tape. And I take those and I attach them to my gun. So it is now taped on, not very well, but taped on. Have I loaded this gun? And I don't think so, because when we start thinking about what it means for the cartridge magazine to be attached to or inserted into the firearm, what they're trying to refer to, when we start thinking about the ordinary meaning of this and the purposive language in terms of what is Parliament intending to deal with here, it doesn't appear that they're intending to deal with what happens if you duct tape a magazine to your firearm. That's not the consideration. So 
arguably a judge could go another way. A judge could say, you know what, that counts, and so I'm going to convict on that basis. I think that would be appealable, but I can't say for certain. But what they're usually referring to, and I'm just going to show for the camera, I have taken all of the cartridges out of this magazine. What they're usually referring to is the magazine going into the firearm in that capacity, in a fashion where if there was actually a live cartridge in this, it could then be fed into the firing path and theoretically this gun could go off with some amount of manipulation. Even though, you know, you may not have one chambered, even though the action may be open, that would still be, you know, counted as not unloaded. So you would be in violation if you were transporting this, if you were doing whatever. But under the circumstances, that's what they're talking about. They're not really talking about duct tape. So in my view, and I, again, I can't give a 100% answer because the law is strange and sometimes judges go in unexpected directions. But I don't think that the AR-7 is going to count as loaded so long as the magazine is simply tucked into the, uh, tucked into the, uh, the, the stock there for storage and transport because it's a hiking gun. It's a thing you take into the, into the brush because you're going out looking for rabbits or you're going out plinking in the wilderness or something along those lines. So ultimately, really the loaded definition is fairly narrow. Uh, it's, you know, if you've got a, a shell in here, that's loaded. If you've got a magazine that is charged and you've got it in the magwell of the pistol, again, loaded. I'm not sure if you can see the direction, but I'm not pointing at my hands here. I'm not pointing at anything dangerous. And of course, if you've got a cartridge in the chamber, even if you don't have the magazine in, so, you know, notwithstanding that I don't have a magazine in this at the moment, you can see empty magwell. If I take this and push it into the chamber, that would also count as loaded. This is actually a fairly common sense definition, but people get worried because of course, once you're dealing with an area as highly regulated as firearms are, you don't wanna make a mistake. You don't wanna end up getting charged. The grayest area on this would be the AR-7 situation where you've actually got a magazine that's charged that somehow fits inside the gun. And when I say fits inside in the context of the AR-7, I mean into the stock similar to into this section. So assuming that this magazine actually worked with this shotgun, which of course they completely do not, but you know, if you have it sort of tucked like that, again, I don't think a court is likely to find that that is what was intended by the definition of cartridge magazine attached to or inserted into the firearm, similar for the duct tape scenario, but the courts sometimes do weird things with guns. There's a lot of decisions out there that I would not have predicted up until they happened. And so I can't say for certain. You're taking some risk with that. I mean, I'd be annoyed if I heard that somebody had been arrested for that or, you know, gone through the whole trial process. But weirder things have happened. I do hope that this has provided a little bit of clarification and that people maybe have a better understanding of unloaded versus loaded in Canadian law. If you've enjoyed this content or found it useful, if it's answered a question you've had, please like, share, and subscribe. Channel is still growing. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I want to give a special thank you to $30 patron supporter Steve Browning, as well as to my $10 patron supporters, Ma Buddy Keith, Process Eng, Stephen Larson, Mark D., General Counsel of the CCFR, John Robinson, Tim Rogers, Roy Haddock, Frackles Dak, Jean Alexandre Tessier, Cameron Johnson, Sir Goat, Sights and Arms Limited, Chaba Hollow, Peter Heinem, Craig Kwan, Akin Coxall, North Central Process Service, Toys Are for Boys, Ian Vaughn, Milan Vrekic, Terence Griffiths, uh, Doug Thompson, Ma uh, Malcolm Taylor, Brad Crooker, and Jason Harrington, and Lee Kiso. Thank you. Uh, there's going to be a link to my patron below. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this content and hopefully it's armed you with knowledge.